will go to the uh, to the a certain type of of documents we call excavation reports. And uh, excavation reports are produced in the lots, and I will give you some numbers in a few minutes. But first, an introduction to uh, the Danish SMR, Sites and Monuments Records, okay? Because that SMR has a quite a history. It was uh, founded in the late, uh, what was it, 20th century, and the digitization started around 1980. So at that time, uh, the paper records were transferred into digital form, and the uh, different sites were recorded uh, in their geographic position. Now, at that time, um, uh, the amount of data, and please sit down and relax, was 100 megabytes. <laughs> Incredible. And this required, of course, a central agency for the management of these enormous uh, amounts of data. <coughs> And uh, it was entered by means of a acoustic um, device, uh, which was able to transfer 300 bits a second. I mean, amazing. Now, um, that was then done, I think five or six years later, then the sites were entered. And um, then followed the um, protected monuments, and then finally the uh, archaeological sites found on the sea floor. So now it's uh, complete, um, and uh, the density of um, of of the total amount of finds is around um, six. Uh, sites per square kilometer. So that's the uh, density, uh, but in, on certain locations, uh, certain areas, the density is, of course, much, much higher. Now, uh, being a first mover into the digital world meant also that, um, that there were some, let's say, some aspects which were transferred to the digital world from the paper record, which we today uh, would smile off. But you see, uh, they transferred the maps, and on the map there was a signature, let's say, a red for uh, Stone Age, um, blue for Iron Age, and uh, squares for sites, and uh, triangles, or circles for graves and so on, and that entered into the database and stayed there. So, Avi, uh, some, this has been kept as it was um, and has not changed. So, then, um, uh, recent development was to make a interface where you can actually search for these finds sort of uh, SQL-like uh, interface, and you can't uh, understand what it's there, but, it's, uh, but it says, well, this is a, f a type of site of this category and this subcategory and different uh, types of identifiers from which period it comes and from which geographical area. So that's uh, one type of search you can uh, do. And uh, you can also enter the professional ver version, which I have on display here. So you can uh, look for specific uh, place names in the professional version. You can do search for uh, certain uh, administrative numbers and, and so on. And you can also combine the different uh, criteria with a Boolean um, operators. So you can search for 
um, let's say, uh, what has been entered originally. Now, at some point of time, uh, 2005, um, it was decided that the excavation reports from rescue archaeology had to be handed in digitally and stored in this database. And um, if the, uh, the institution which had uh, done the uh, excavation had not um, handed in the report, then the institution didn't get money for uh, the excavation. So that was a quite, um, quite good trick to, to uh, get rid of uh, backlogs. So since 2005, 10,000 reports have been entered into this wonderful storage. And um, then the, the institution which handed in the uh, reports could then tick, tick and say, well, this document is so precious. It needs to be secret because I want to publish this uh, 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 soon. And uh, so two thirds of the reports are secret and are not accessible. So then there's a, a paper backlog, 15,000. Uh, and uh, before that, before 1984, the archive is 120 meters of reports. So what we are seeing or what we can search into is only a tiny, tiny fragment of what has been recorded. But no one on the planet knows what it's, what is there. <laughs> this is archaeology when it's best. <laughs> so, this is how a report might look like. And they are, some of them are of very, very high quality. Now, um, at certain point of time, um, two years ago, in fact, I got this uh, idea, wouldn't it be nice if one could search into these excavation reports? I mean, we have Google. I mean, it should be quite easy. You have all these reports, digital, PDFs. What's the problem? Um, well, it turned out to be a problem. Um, so it took me some while to get there. And where, where I then uh, ended was at the so-called Royal Library in Denmark. They had the persons, they had the expertise, and they, they made this application in under one week. The problem was solved. So in under one week, the small team made this uh, application. And uh, if I dare, then I will do a live demonstration afterwards. Uh, but first, I will do the safe way. And then, uh, then we can go into, into the more adventurous uh, um, um, and that was uh, later on. Now, it's called for some reason Miloa. I don't know what it means, uh, but that's the librarians who have called it that. And these reports are then harvested, uh, let's say, through the back door of the Sites and Monuments Register. And the agency didn't know that this was possible. They thought that the OAI PMH protocol made it, made it possible to expose the metadata of the database. But they weren't aware of that if you have the link to these data, then you also can pull the contents out. That was quite a surprise. <laughs> so we could harvest all these public reports store them in a repository, and then index them. So now 
they are all full text searchable and of copyright reasons if you get a hit now let's say you search for stone age or something weird uh, and get some uh, reports then if you click on a button then the uh, the, the, the application will pull out the uh, PDFs from the original source and not from the harvested copy. So actually, the owner of the, uh, of the reports can count the number of downloads. Now, um, we can, in this application, we can also uh, because we have also harvested the, the metadata, we can also do geographical searches because every site, of course, has a location. Um, and the further thing is that, um, that we can also analyze the structure of the documents. So we can do searches, let's say, um, Let's say you would search for Stone Age just within the summary of the report or within, the, uh, within a certain section of the description of the features. So it can detect the different types, the structure of the document and, and expose it to the user. Now there are some flaws here, but uh, so it can be improved. It does also support wildcards. So if you look for, let's say, bronze things, okay, then you can enter bronze star and then anything of bronze will be uh, hit. Or you can put in, if people have misspelled bronze, Z or Z, then you can enter a question mark for certain uh, characters. It supports Boolean. Uh, operators and it supports also a near operator. So that means that you can search for, let's say, grave and bronze thing within, let's say, 10 words, a uh, maximum of 10 words from each other. That's the near operator. So, uh, here I have uh, prepared a search. So it says Stenella means Stone Age. Star. Uxe means any axis, any axe of uh, whatever it is from the Stone Age. And then it gives me, um, I don't know how many hits. Uh, and you get a small map snippet of the position. And then you can click on uh, on the uh, on the link and then it will display uh, the uh, actual um, keywords uh, in your uh, in your uh, uh, search window so um, technical issues I know some of you like that it's uh, produced in something called Jura space and something called data site. Uh, yes, Ian Lucene is behind it. Uh, and it is an open source application and an open source front end. And it, it's put on the GitHub where you can uh, pull it down here. So, um, that was <coughs> where I thought this talk should end, and you may applaud, uh, but wait a bit, um, because then um, the agency discovered, well, this wasn't, this wasn't quite what we wanted, that this actually should be a resource used by this. So, something called GDPR, which is something with personal uh, data, some EU regu regulation, 
uh, and they put a lawyer on, onto the case and, and said, well, there are some personal information in these excavation reports. This cannot be, um, this cannot be uh, publicly available. So um, they want to remove, uh, they haven't done it yet, but they want to remove all reports now uh, uh, from the site. So now not only two thirds of the reports will be secret, everything will be uh, secret. And to put uh, the nail into the coffin, uh, they will remove the protocol to harvest uh, metadata behind the scenes. So uh, that is what I'm going to have been told. It's not uh, official yet, but I, w I want to bet that is what's going to happen. Thank you very much.